morning. Good morning. My name is Murray Hebert from the uh, CSIS uh, Chair for Southeast Asian Studies. It's a delight to welcome all of you to our, uh, 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 our Banyan Tree Leadership Forum discussion with uh, Minister Sun Chanto of uh, Cambodia. I think many of you know his bio uh, from, from the invitation and, uh, and probably have heard of him before, but he was, has, was named Minister of uh, Commerce in Cambodia in September last year. Uh, previously, he's had various posts in the government, including Vice Chair of the Council for the Development of Cambodia and also the Minister of Public Works and Transport. The minister brings a lot of uh, uh, private sector experience also, having worked for General Electric GE for 16 years. He's uh, sort of a Washingtonian in some ways because he graduated from uh, American University. He's also studied at the Wharton School and at Harvard. Uh, Minister Chantal, do you want to sit because you're going to be using it or you want to come up here? Okay. Thank you. Great. Uh, good morning, sir. First, uh, let me express my appreciation to CSIS for inviting me to give a talk uh, this morning. And also, uh, to thank all of you for, for being here this morning. Without you being here, I wouldn't be here. So, appreciate very much you showing up. Uh, let me take this opportunity to present to you uh, Cambodia, the outlook Cambodia, and I will walk you through as to the reason why uh, the investor should look at Cambodia is a place to invest. So, so for those of you that never been to Cambodia, Cambodia is located in the heart, what I call the center of gravity for Southeast Asia. So you can see that our country uh, located uh, So right there, that we, where we are, and you know, within an hour and a half line time, you can reach over 600 million consumer. That is a, a glance of how uh, the population uh, the right now is around 15 million. Uh, the land size, if you compare, if you put 181, 035 square kilometer, you don't really know, see what is it. But if you compare, let's say, France, we are about one third of France. Okay, if you talk about the size. Uh, the GDP per capita so is over 1,000, and the inflation rate is still less than 5%. Uh, and so for the first time, we have uh, the country rating. So right now, it's rate uh, uh, B2. Now, here's the reason why you should consider as a place to do uh, the investment. One's in microeconomic stability, of which I will go in more detail. Uh, the government of Cambodia is a pro-business government. Again, I'm going to talk. Here's all the reason. A pro-business government, competitive investment incentives, a one-stop service, access to the, uh, the world market, investment protection, and so on. So let me go into more detail. In terms of macroeconomic stability, our GDP grew at average 8% for the last 10 years. That's probably the fastest in Southeast Asia. Our exchange rate has been stable, around 4,000 real to one US dollar, which I'm going to show the chart. The inflation is that it's low. Our debt to GDP ratio, it's very low, it's very low. It's you know, the rule of thumb around 40%, but we only are 32 plus percent, uh, the debt to GDP ratio. And if you compare this, debt to GDP ratio for a country in Europe, for example, uh, Greece, 177%. I think Japan, probably 200%. US, close to 200%. So we still have room, still have room to borrow uh, for investment into infrastructure, for example, productive investment rather than borrow for consumption. Our reserve over 3.6 billion US dollars. It took us almost well, about 12 years to increase from a million, up 100 million to a billion, but took us only uh, a few years to increase to that uh, 3 billion US dollars. So very stable, this GDP growth. About 2009, we don't really, we didn't grow because the world uh, economic crisis, but we're still uh, uh, doing okay. But now, last year, 7.6, and we expect the GDP to grow 7.5, 7.6 the next four or five years. GDP, you can see, uh, nicely uh, in per capita. Currency, been stable. Inflation is low. Foreign reserve is good. Trade, is trade deficit, but it's not that, that significant. 
The deficit is also small. You can see around 6%. Now, we compare all the countries in the region. Uh, Cambodia, if you take out, take out the 2008, 2009, you talk about the last 10 years, 9.8%. It's a very, very fast-growing fast economy. Pro-business government, this is important. We consider the oh, private sector is an engine of our economic growth. The accessibility to Kimun government is very easy. I will give you my business card with my mobile number in there. You can call me. You can SMS me. You can email me. And I mean it. I mean it. But sometimes when you call from overseas, it doesn't show the number. It show only zero, zero, 001. And sometimes I cannot answer the phone. Either I'm in a meeting, a cabinet meeting, I can't answer the phone. I don't know who to call back because it shows zero, zero, 001. Please text me, Chantal, please call me back. Then I definitely call you back. Okay? Guarantee you. Now, we create 10 working groups that co chair by the private sector. For example, technical working group on infrastructure. So when I was the Minister of Public Work and Transport, I co chair that technical working group. We have private sector as a co-chair. We have technical working group on banking, on taxation, agriculture, tourism, export processing. So we have 10 technical working group that meet on a monthly basis. So any issues that the private sector may have and want to resolve, they go resolve that technical working group. If the technical working group cannot resolve, issues raised by a private sector. We will escalate this to what we call the government private sector forum. And this forum is chaired by our prime minister. We invite around 500 private sector in the room. We invite all the ambassador, IMF, World Bank, ADB, NGO in that forum. The private sector can ask a question to the prime minister, raise the issue, and he can make the decision right there and then. So the minister, minister got to be ready to answer the question to the prime minister, and he can make the decision. The decision made in that forum, it's considered the cabinet decision, because all Kimun cabinet sit in that forum, sit in that forum. So very productive, efficient forum. Now, IFC of the World Bank helped organize the government private sector forum for 24 countries. They did a survey. Which country has the most productive, efficient government privacy forum? And I'm proud to say that Cambodia came first. It's the most productive, efficient private sector forum that can resolve the problem of a private sector. Our investment incentive. I would say that our investment law provides the most generous invest, I'm sorry, investment incentives uh, uh, in, am I? Well, corporate income tax, 20%. We have tax holiday up to nine years. No discrimination between a foreign investor and a local investor. There's no alien business law in Cambodia. And every economic sector is open to uh, investor. Tell me which country that allow a foreigner to own 100% banking license. Tell me which country that allow a foreigner to own 100% telecom sector insurance, agricultural sector. So we are a small, open economy, no restriction, no price control, no exchange control. It's important that you can send the money to Cambodia. You can take the profit out. There's no issues. Try with other country. It's easy to send money in. Take the money out can be difficult. can be difficult, but not in Cambodia. So there's no exchange control. And... Uh, we open, we open every sector of our economy. There's no requirement for you to take local partner. Do your 100% operation in, in the country. Labor force in the country, which I'm gonna go uh, uh, later on to also, so it's very young, dynamic uh, labor force. The average age in Cambodia is 23.7. And you, you might ask me why, why your country is population so young. It's so sad for me to remind you that the Khmer Rouge wiped out one generation of Cambodia from 1979 to, uh, 1975 to 1979. So the very young uh, workforce today, well, it's not working anymore. <laughs> it's not moving. And 
Anyway, so, so, so the investment incentive, okay. Can you move to the next slide? Yeah, okay. Can you move to the next slide, please? Okay. Also, they have uh, another reason that they have one stop service. The CDC, the uh, Council for Development of Cambodia, just like Investment Board. And I also today serve as a white chair, in addition to my decision as a Minister of Commerce. I'm also the white chair of the CDC. The chairman of the CDC is our Prime Minister. So we have one stop service. We provide you with information. We look at your application. We do the evaluation. We approve your investment. We help you with work permit, visa, company registration, do the exemption. It's all there, all done, all done at the CDC. Access to the world market, we are a member of the, the WTO, we are a member of ASEAN, and product made in Cambodia, you can, sh can be shipped to European country without duty. So that's a very, very good for us, very competitive advantage there because of, you know, product made in Vietnam or in Thailand, you have to pay tax when you ship to European country. Not from Cambodia, not from Cambodia. And also we have GSP from the US, which give us a low uh, custom duty rate also. We have MFN with all these countries. We have investment protection agreement with all these countries. All those, this bilateral investment protection agreement. All those we have not signed any, the uh, bilateral investment treaty with the US, but our investment law, our investment law protect uh, the uh, foreign uh, uh, investor. So we're looking to move forward with the uh, bilateral investment uh, treaty uh, with the U.S. Uh, I had the opportunity to meet with uh, Ambassador Michael Froman during my visit. So we, we talked about that, that we need to move forward with, uh, with the bid in order uh, you know, to uh, attract maybe more FDI from the U.S. because U.S. companies probably want to wait and see until we get the BIT uh, before they invest in the country. But having said that, we have U.S. company always in there, General Electric. Have the office there, Microsoft, Coca-Cola, Google, Chevron, Caltech, and so on and so forth is there. But not enough. We like to attract more FDI from, from the U.S. Infrastructure is getting better, getting better. We build the ASEAN highway that connects Cambodia to Thailand, to Vietnam, Cambodia to Laos. Uh, we rehabilitate our railway that connects uh, Phnom Penh to our deep seaport. Uh, we in the process of reuptake the railway to connect to the state railway of Thailand, so goods and services, or goods and people can travel from Singapore to Malaysia to Thailand to Cambodia. That's the first first phase. Second phase would be to build a spur from Cambodia to Vietnam. Then you can ship goods or people can travel from Singapore, Malaysia to Thailand, Cambodia, Vietnam, China, Kunming, and connect to Europe. That part of what we call Singapore Kunming Railing Project. We upgrade our seaport in Sinewell, allow big, bigger ship to, uh, to dock at our, our, our port. We build new container port in Phnom Penh. We upgrade our airport, upgrade our airport. So infrastructure is a lot better than, uh, than before. We lay fiber optic across the country, power plant being built. This, you can see the, the map of Cambodia and all the road. So we build a lot of uh, road that connect to, to, uh, to Vietnam. Uh, this side also, this side is Vietnam, uh, uh, connect to Thailand and to, to Laos. You need to do the integration within the country and the integration with our neighboring country. This uh, the port, this is uh, the international port. Uh, we also allow private sector to build a port on a BOT basis. This railway, this uh, the, 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 the line that's already been rehabilitated from Phnom Penh to our deep sea port in Oval. We're gonna to move to rehabilitate this line to connect to Thailand. This the missing link, 48 kilometers was destroyed during the war, but now we almost complete that link. And then uh, Thailand will complete their section also of six kilometers. Then all the way can come all the way to see the report. Then the future is to go through Siem Reap, this uh, the home of Angkor Wat, the wonder, uh, one of seven wonders of the world, and go through along the, uh, the river here, and this connect to Vietnam and this connect to, to Laos, so that. We have special economic zone, 33 has been approved, but 11 in operation. Uh, the special economic zone is good that they have water, supplies there, electricity is there, wastewater treatment plant is there, it's one location. We are custom, where all the control has been done at that location, so it's easy for investors to put the factory there and everything is there in one stop. 
The special economic zone mainly located along the Cambodian Thai border, uh, so that uh, people can take advantage of Cambodia's uh, EBA from Europe, GSP. They put a factory uh, uh, near the border, uh, so that you know the workers, uh, the product can be shipped out back from Cambodia easily to Thailand and to to Vietnam. I mentioned to you, within one and a half hour flying time, over 600 million consumer that you can serve. We have sound financial, so we, have, uh, we don't have a problem with uh, economic crisis, 97, we didn't have a problem. Uh, 2008, uh, the financial uh, crisis, again, Cambodia didn't have any problem with our bank uh, sector. We have a lot of banks, 35 banks, if I can get a license, you know, 35 banks, but I think that sector will go through consolidation. I don't think that uh, Cambodia uh, can have 35, 30, you know, 35 banks. The market price is small. You can see some consolidation later on. Deposit, seven points plus billion. The uh, credit to private sector, also about the same, uh, same size. We have a stock exchange, but we have only one company listed on the stock exchange to start with. Last Monday, last Monday, second company uh, was listed. So we hope to list more and more company on our stock exchange. Resource, oil and gas, oil and gas, mineral, bauxite. Uh, so we had the opportunity to meet with Chevron during my trip also. They have block A in Cambodia. Uh, they uh, do the exploration there, and uh, definitely the reserve there. We reserve there, so we're gonna proceed with the discussion, negotiation with Chevron to conclude that project in order for us to do the extraction of our oil uh, on the coast of, uh, of Cambodia. Population, you can see, again, very young, extremely young population. Looks at like 65% between 15 and 64, 64 years old. Very young, dynamic workforce. This investment trend approved by country. You can see US, very small, but we see China, Korea, EU, Malaysia, Vietnam, and other country. So I hope and we try to expand trade and investment. We hope that U.S. company will invest more in, in, in Cambodia. Again, this uh, investment by, by sector. I, I think you can, uh, you know, this you can download. I think CS, uh, IS can uh, post it, and then they can, if I want this presentation, can, can, can download. We didn't print the presentation, try to save a few trees <laughs> from being cut to make the paper. So. So investment opportunity, we have agriculture sector, labor intensive industry, we, we try to move away from a labor intensive industry to a semi skill. So we talk about food processing, light manufacturing, transportation, ICT, energy, human resource development, that area uh, that we like to, to attract the FDI from uh, for, for. Again, back to the reason to invest in a country. Now, I'm telling you all the good reason rosy picture about Cambodia, then he said, it's impossible. It can't be something that, you know, it's not working, you know. Well, let, let me be honest, uh, corruption is, is one issue uh, that exists in Cambodia, but corruption exists in other countries. The question, what are we doing about it? And are we doing something about it? Yes, we're doing something about it. Uh, last two, uh, well, two years ago, we passed the anti-corruption law in the country. We set up, set up the anti-corruption unit to fight the corruption. The government official had to uh, declare the asset, the asset, and when they take the position, had to declare the asset again when they leave the position. So, and then put in an envelope to seal it. So the anti-corruption unit, the uh, ACU, can open the envelope anything, anytime. That, okay, we suspect that official is unusually rich. You can open and say, look, you declare you have one car, now you have 10 cars. We had the money to buy 10 cars, additional nine cars. So this is the kind of thing that we, we, we are doing. Now, another reason, uh, another uh, thing that we do is that we try to automate a lot of manual process to, uh, you know, to automate that. For example, at my Ministry of Commerce, today you need to see a certificate of origin in order to export the product. You come to my ministry, give all the paper, so we key in all the information for you. So there's interface between the government official and the private sector. That you leave room for them to negotiate, leave room for them to ask for facilitate payment. So now I put that online, hopefully by September, this system is gonna be online. You don't have to come to the Ministry of Commerce. You can submit your application, the information online. You can print your own CO 
at wherever your factory located. We just review the information online, we release it. We just deduct the, the fees, the $30 or $38 fees from your bank's account, and there you go, you get your CEO. Come with registration. Today, I had to go to my ministry also to ask for the name. So look, I want to use this name, ABC Company. Then my staff will tell you, come back two days from now. We had to check for you. So you go away. You come back two days later. said, look, I want to use XYZ. The guy said, come back two days from now. Then, wow, well, XYZ has been used already. Come back again. Oh, I, want, I want to use Donald Duck. Oh, okay, come back. Wow, well, Donald Duck has been used already. But mm, if with the, prop, with the right price, I think I can tweak it. You know? This is the kind of thing that's happening. Again, I got to tell you reality. But I'm doing this online also. So we can come to this online. So ABC, computer comebacks have been used. XYZ has been used. Donald has been used. So you do it online. So once you cut down the interface between the private sector and a government official, you can cut down corruption. In addition to that, Kabun government raised the salary of civil servant 25% every year. I bet you the private sector would love to get even 10% every year, right? We do 25% every year. Again, to give them uh, you know, additional salary, a proper salary, so they don't uh, you know, resort to the, uh, corruption. We also allow to take some of the fees, for example, the certificate of origin, CO. We charge $38 to the private sector. The finance ministry and the anti corruption unit has agreement with the Ministry of Commerce that you can take right 10%, keep 10% of that amount. And then you dole out as a reward for good work performance to your staff. So now we have all that money put in the pool and we distribute that to our people. But we tell them, so you can get that money, additional bonus, but when you come to work, we have to scan. You got to scan your finger there, what time you arrive, come to work, what time you leave. You don't just don't come to work, but at the end of the month, we have my bonus. Before, we don't have the system. So every day, we don't see them. They show up at the end of the month to collect the bonus. <laughs> but not anymore now. I got a finger, I got to, got to scan that. So that's the thing that we, we're doing to, to fight the corruption. Another, another thing, logistics cost. In Cambodia, it's expensive. All those, we do a lot of infrastructure, but still, uh, it's, it's a little, little more expensive in terms of logistic costs in Cambodia. The electricity also more expensive than Thailand, than Vietnam, but we're building power plant now. And the next few years when that come online, the price of our electricity will come down. Today we buy some from Vietnam, we buy some from Thailand, we buy electricity from Laos, but five years from now, we probably export our electricity back to Vietnam because the grid there already. Okay, so, so these are some of the issues that, uh, that I'd like to, to, uh, to be upfront with you. Uh, minimum wage issues, a few months ago, you see a lot of demonstration for the worker, the factory, or the, the garment industry, textile, that asked to raise the minimum wage from $80 to 160 is in one go. They want double overnight. And when the, the owner and the government you know, to, did not agree to the demand, they do a demonstration, some violence doing demonstration and so on. So now with the increase from 80 to 100, and we are working with ILO, International Labor Union uh, Organization, work with the World Bank to sit down and do scientific calculation. What the number should be? Is it 160 or should it be 200? Or should it be 157, for example? Before we just plug the number of the air, you know, oh, 80 is good, oh, 100 is good. But now we've got to do properly, scientifically, is it 180 or 160? And when we do this, we want to make sure that Cambodia, Cambodia is still competitive. You cannot price yourself out of the market. If you do that 160 or 200, then look, I'm going to go to Myanmar. They pay $57 a month, okay? So this is the kind of thing that we need to look at, at both we all angle in your wall. We must look at the whole forest, not the tree. So that the Cameroon government has been doing that right now, trying to resolve the labor issue, uh, the minimum wage, and so on. So let me stop at this point and leave more time for you to ask questions. Uh, uh, is, that, is that okay to, uh, if you ask questions? Yeah? Do you want to stand? Let me sit. I, I can stand here, actually. I can stand here. I have a more chart here, you know, but I didn't put this talk about USA thing, but uh, it's okay. You can get it later on. Yep. 
Please identify yourself for me. Hello. Hi, my name is Dr. Donna Wells. I'm an expert in the Russian language internet. Can you talk about popular internet access rates in Cambodia, as well as how the Cambodian government intends to approach issues pertaining to internet freedom? Thank you. Thank you very much. We, the, our population is of 15 million. Uh, as of 2013, we have 4 million internet users. And the year before, uh, 2.7. So you see the growth rate, almost like 50% every year, the, the internet access. Okay, so it's important for, for uh, our uh, young population to have access to the internet. And uh, we're in the process of drafting, finalizing e-commerce law. Okay, because we're going to move to the e-commerce, to the digital economy. So hopefully by September, we're going to submit the uh, e-commerce uh, law, uh, you know, uh, e-signature, e-payment. So that will, will uh, you know, uh, accelerate uh, our population to really learn how to use uh, the internet. Uh, we had a meeting with uh, PayPal. We uh, well, you have internet, you have uh, you know e-commerce, you got to have the, the payment system. So we're going to talk. We always had a meeting with PayPal. We have a meeting with uh, different uh, bank and so on to get ready for the e-commerce when it comes uh, online. So we are moving. We push uh, in that direction. Uh, a lot of people using social media. Uh, in Cambodia, the Facebook and the Twitter and all that. Uh, we, our ministry also have a Facebook, so please follow us our Facebook, www.facebook.com slash moc.gov.kh. MOC means commerce, gov is government, KH is Cambodia. We had, uh, you know, we set up about seven months ago, not eight months yet. We have already 78,000 fans. Not bad for seven months. So to show you that, yeah, people are interested. In the, the information. So the digital media, our young generation don't watch TV that much, but they go through social media. So it's important that the Cambodian government push and also know how, how to play the social media game. I hope it answers your question. Yep. Yes, ma'am. Hi, Christy Ellis with Women's Wear Daily. Um, <clears throat> regarding some of the reforms you've made and some of the meetings you've held on minimum wage with apparel brands and retailers. Um, I understand that Levi Strauss and company recently pulled some business out of Cambodia with concerns about repression of labor rights in, in the area of um, protests and union um, unionization. Um, I'm wondering um, what steps specifically you'll take this year to address those concerns. Are you ha planning to hold mo me more meetings with retailers and brands? They're very concerned. They've sent letters, I think, maybe to you and the Prime Minister mm -hmm. regarding the violence on January 3rd, on which five workers were killed um, when armed security forces opened fire. So if you could address that, I would really appreciate it. Thank yep. you. Uh, thank you very much. In terms of uh, the brand, we have uh, the, the buyers, major brand, you know, from the U.S., from over the world, uh, that go to meet with us. Uh, have two meetings, so every two months, three months, the whole brand, uh, the buyer, go to Cambodia to meet with the Cambodian government to find out uh, the issue with the labor. Now, like I mentioned to you that we are in a process of working with ILO uh, to calculate the minimum wage, the minimum wage, and also for ILO to talk to the union to educate them also. Some of them don't really understand the labor labor law. Uh, you cannot just do a demonstration like that without go through the whole, whole process. So we need to educate the union also. You know, only in Cambodia, I think that uh, we it'd be so free that we allow everybody to create union, if you will. Each factory, some factory has 10 different unions. I think four or five people you can form union in Cambodia. And so now we need to really so we're in a process drafting the union law right now, okay, to really regulate, not that to, 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 to stop them from organizing uh, the, uh, the, the labor's uh, union, but at least for them to understand the role and responsibility, the employer, the employee, the union. So we address that issue. Now, labor Strauss, you know, reduce uh, uh, the, the order from Cambodia. Target also reduce, I think, uh, uh, the order from Cambodia because they're afraid that the labor unrest and so on. But so far, since the, 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 the incident in January, 
is practically calm, uh, safe, no, no issue. It's uh, unregrettable you know, that uh, the five workers was, uh, were killed uh, during the violence uh, demonstration. And when I said violence, it's really violent. They, uh, they burn uh, factories, and uh, it is uncalled for, actually, the whole, from both sides, actually, from both sides. So I hope that we will not have this kind of uh, violent demonstration uh, in, in this, uh, this uh, sector. Yeah, when people understand that Kimbun government doing something, before they don't understand it, look, we ask for 160, you guys keep said 100 or 80. You don't tell us the reason why you cannot do it. But now we go through the whole calculation with them. So with that, I hope they understand and uh, will not resort to, to, to strike a violent, uh, violent strike. But you know, all, all those our labor, again, the cost probably more than, than Myanmar. But Cambodia is the first country that adopt ILO. We have battery factory in Cambodia. The ILO is there, has an office that go and inspect the factory for worker condition, worker right, no child labor, no sweatshop. We the only country that respect that. So the buyer also look, we're willing to pay more. You know, so the gap and the like, and then we, we like to pay more for the product made in Cambodia because we know that the labor standard is respected. So the, that's our competitive advantage by having the ILO and we comply by uh, comply with I ILO and comply with BFC, Cambodia. I hope you answered your question, ma'am. Yeah, but we continue to have a dialogue. I meet, I sit with them also. The meeting chair by our deputy prime minister, uh, Prime Minister Kit Chun, and I also always sit in a meeting with a with buyer uh, to, uh, to listen to them, uh, take their concern, and then to, to work among ourselves, try to resolve that. Yes, we, 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 we always, uh, we could, we, they want to uh, tell us, you know, look, we're coming this month. So we, I think every two months, we, yeah, two months they, they, they go there uh, to have a meeting with us. And I have a meeting every three months between the Government Manufacturing Association and BFC, the Better Factory Cambodia, the, uh, the ILO, to also address any issues that BFC might have with our factory any issue with GMAC, the Government Manufacturing Association, hey, with, uh, with, uh, with the union. So that every three months. Yes, sir, in the back. Thomas Campbell, American University. Um, you have, uh, Cambodia receives a very large amount of overseas development aid, ODA. And I'm sure you're familiar with the debate to what degree ODA is a backstop to true government reforms because it allows the government not to reform and still receive a lot of money. And my question is, there's a big debate about particularly Chinese uh, aid. Uh, if I was an investor, how would you show me that in spite of all that unconditioned aid, you're engaging in serious economic reforms? And I'm talking about show me rather than just tell me. And I'll give you an example. I study Vietnam. Vietnam has this provincial competitiveness index, where every year there's an index about improvement in every province. Does Cambodia have such a thing? or work on establishing, establishing such a thing? How do you show me that governance improves consistently and the government works on it? Thank you. Edward Forbe, yeah. You would uh, put it this way. Last year, 2013, we had the election. The ruling party lost 22 seats, okay? Before they had 90, I won 23 in National Assembly, and we lost 22 seats. So there's a lot of people vote, okay, and we lost 22 seats, it was really a wake-up call for the ruling party. And so we are going all out to reform. Like I said, I'm doing reform at my ministry, at the line ministry also doing reform. Education, we also reform there to improve the quality of our education. Finance ministry, uh, taxation, taxation also reform. We put everything online, try to generate uh, more, more income. Custom, reform cut down on, uh, on the corruption there, the speed, the process of cleaning uh, the, the goods from the ports, come control my, my, uh, my unit that also inspect uh, the food safeties and export. Like that. We stop doing 100% inspection. We do risk man management, 2%. So this is the kind of reform that we're doing at, at, the, uh, uh, at the level of the line ministry. And the prime minister made it very clear, each, each line ministry must go through the process and eliminate red tape. 
reform. He who reform will lead the country 2018 the election. So we, we, we see that it's important. If we don't reform, 2018, our party might, might not win. So it's, it's important. It's a major wake-up call for us, and it's, it's a good thing for Cambodia that the CPP, the ruling party, lost some seat. <laughs> it shows that people want change, people want reform, and we listen. We listen to the voter, and that's why I'm going all out at my ministry. I revamp completely, restructure, reorganize the whole ministry of, of, of commerce that never been done for the last 20 years. Never. So I've done that, reform. Okay, I have an organization, assign the people, to the uh, right people to the right place. And you assign the people, you promote people that know not who they, who they know, but what they know. So that's what I'm doing at my ministry. Before you just, the minister has the power to appoint someone to position. I don't do that. I announce the open position at my ministry. Then the staff can submit their application or resume. And each one of them had to interview with my seven deputies. Each one of them scored them, rang them, put in the envelope, seal it, don't put their name, give me the seven envelope. I the last one to interview the candidates. A minister interview every candidate for that position. Then get a score. Then I put on Excel spreadsheet, open each envelope, score that. We sit down together, re review that, and we select the best. This never been done in Cambodian history. Never, ever, that the people get promoted, get nominated, appointed through interview. This is the first time. And that is spread, spreading from my ministry to the Ministry of Education to appoint the director of the department, go through the interview. Very transparent. Before, if you know someone or you pay for the position, you get appointed. So when you pay, there's investment. When there's investment, you want return. So return through, through what? Through corruption. So there's no investment today. You don't pay a dollar to get promoted. And so that's what, what we're doing, sir. We tried. But again, the reform does not take overnight. This is work in progress. Work in progress. Reform that. Reform administrative reform. Judiciary reform. A major one. We just passed a law. Major reform in that, in that, in that area. Okay, so it's work in progress. Like I said, he who reform will reap the benefit next election. Yes, sir. Yeah, hi. Um, my name is David Miller, and I'm from um, University of California, Davis, the College of Agriculture and Environmental Science. Um, I was interested about uh, hear more about your uh, working groups, particularly the one in <coughs> excuse me, the one in agriculture. Um, we've been having a lot of difficulty with the, with the, with MARD, the Ministry of Agriculture and Rural Development. Um, they're try trying very hard, and yet they know nothing about business. Uh, we're working with smallholder farmers who uh, very much have difficulty, perhaps because of past history of Cambodia, forming themselves into value chains in which they can do collective marketing, uh, collective buying, uh, all those kinds of elements that you, want, that you turn agriculture into a commercial sector with smallholder farmers. Um, and I was wondering where, where are there uh, cross silos between ministries where the Ministry of, of Commerce would uh, 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 work with the Ministry of Agriculture to build agriculture as an industry in Cambodia. Thank you, sir. The uh, agriculture sector is, is very, very important for, for Cambodia. As you know, 80% of our people live on a farm. And so we need to help them. Now, we just create the Tower Rice, uh, or Cambodia's uh, Rice Federation, again, to help the farmers to uh, be able to, uh, you know, uh, to uh, uh, sell the rice paddy uh, to this federation rather than sell rice paddy to Vietnam or sell rice paddy to Thailand. So we try to do value added in the country. I work very closely now with the ministry, uh, Minister of uh, Agriculture on, uh, on, on working group, okay? But 
again, I have to be, to be frank and honest with you, that the God working group number nine, that number nine, was not working properly before. But now we have a new minister now. He's just been appointed at the same time with me in September. And we're going to move to strengthen that working group, that technical working group, to really help our, our sector. And so we, we're going to do, you know, federation of right exporters, of, uh, yeah, right federation, rubber federation. We're going to have silk and so on and so forth. That's how we, we're going to help uh, our, uh, our farmers. So please come to give some ideas. We, we need badly. So, so during my trip, we got an opportunity to meet with uh, ADM. Hopefully, we meet with Cargill, and as they can go there and, and help, and also give them some some ideas how how to do it. We have one uh, PhD from Cambodia, also uh, she's uh, very good in uh, food security, food safety, climate change, and impact on our culture in Cambodia. She also helped uh, Ministry of Agriculture and Fishery. Yeah, so I hope I answered your question, sir. But but. Before it didn't work well, didn't work at all actually, but now it's getting better. Yes, please do, please do, because I'm also the the vice uh, uh, chair of that technical working group, of that uh, agriculture technical working group. So I think the back, you have a question, yes, sir. Hi, my name is Storm Tape. I'm with uh, Human Rights Watch. Um, I appreciate your mention of the anti-corruption unit. Um, and their ability to investigate members of parliament. Uh, it seems like the issue with corruption is more transparency than it is an ability to investigate. Um, Cambodia still has a law which uh, makes it a crime to publicly disclose assets of members of parliament, and it seems like those who would support such a law would be ones would have, that would have issues with hiding assets or having something to hide. And, uh, I'm wondering why would Cambodia would support such a law if they don't have anything to hide? Why can Cambodia support such a, a, a draconian law? Uh, the um, law that would make it illegal to publicly disclose assets of members of parliament? I, I'm sorry, I'm not... I, I, why? No, uh, you know, the, uh, the, the member of parliament, senate, member of Cambodian government, director on up must declare the asset. And the ACU, anti government unit, they pull out. They, they see that, guy, that person, unusually rich, they open the envelope, and they said, look, here is two cars. Now your, your garage has five cars. Show us the source of your income to do that. I, I, maybe I don't understand your question right, but our law, our, our anti-government law is probably one of the toughest one in the world. Very, very tough. But now, the implementation, okay, this is a young organization, very young organization, okay, uh, that uh, they need capacity building also for them to detect how to, how to audit, how to identify, how to catch uh, the, the, uh, the corrupt people, okay, that one. Another thing, we all sign MOU. ACU, anti grab unit, signed MOU with Coca-Cola, first company in Cambodia, that Coke said, we will play by the rule, by the law. We resist the temptation, or we resist the bribery. So Coca-Cola signed MOU, the first company, because Coca-Cola had to comply with FCPA in the US. But at the same time, they must comply with the anti-corruption uh, uh, law in Cambodia also. So they signed MOU. So we hope that more and more companies will sign this MOU and they play by the rule. Sometimes, again, take two to tango. The tango, right? Because if you don't bribe, if the demand you don't pay, what are they gonna do to you? Slow down a day, your shipment don't clear? We have a hotline. My ministry put a hotline. CO 48 hours. You don't get 48 hours, you call a hotline. And then we're gonna find out. Why does he always not issue in 40 hours? That's the, 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 the rule in our ministry. Can we wait for bribery? So we also have a hotline trying to address this corruption issue. Again, so we are fighting it. We are fighting it, okay? It's a work in progress. We teach our people. We send our people overseas to learn. And you know, how, how do they do in, in Singapore? We went to Hong Kong to learn from the people in Hong Kong. How you control the corruption? 
But again, if you don't raise the salary, hey, you're not sufficient or proper salary, then the temptation is there. And if you leave room for them, the temptation is there also. But you put it even online. Uh, what, what you, how are you going to meet and demand the bribery from people? Thanks for that answer. It, Thank you. Um, it, it seems like instead of having members of parliament privately disclose their assets to the anti-corruption unit, it seems like transparency and having them publicly disclose their assets would seem like a more direct way to fight the corruption issue. Well, uh, again, the law that required, based on the law that everyone uh, had to declare the asset, again, they put the sealed envelope, you know, and they, they locked up, and they can pull out any time to review it. And then uh, not only that, I think uh, once every two years, you also had to declare too. Not, not, you don't have to wait until you leave the position. Every two years, go back, you resubmit again. Again, they compare again. The old one, the new one, in two years, my God, you five houses. <laughs> Where you come from? But if you can justify, yeah, I, I buy houses because, look, in the first one, I have 10 hectares of land. I just sold five hectares of land so that money I go buy cars. It's okay, you can justify that, it's fine. But if you don't, then where you get the money from? Any question, please? Yes. Hi, um, I'm Savitia Sok, a Cambodian student attending Georgia Mason University. Uh, I know that Cambodia is uh, opening their economic doors in 2015 for the ASEAN uh, economic community. Just wanted to know, like, how ready are we for competition, especially in the labor force? Okay, that's a good question. Uh, 2015, uh, December 31st, 2015, ASEAN community will be created. ASEAN economic community will be created 2015 with the 600 million consumer. EAC is created to create a single market, single production base for ASEAN. Today, for the old member of ASEAN, six old members, the terror rate, 99.2% is all zero already. But for the new member, Cambodia, Laos, Myanmar, Vietnam, it's around 98.7%, between zero and 5%. So by 2015, most of that is zero. The zero to five is going to be reduced. So there's a free uh, movement of goods, services, capital, and skilled labor, skilled labor. So people said, uh, are you concerned with EAC? Kemore, I mean, would you concern? I said, I'm not concerned. EAC, look at our location. Look at our location. Cambodia can be used as a center or a platform, as a factory, as a warehouse to serve even two country. Vietnam, 90 million consumer. Thailand, around 70. Just right being the two country, we will benefit from the EAC because single production base, single market. So Cambodia will move along. Whether you like it or not, 2015, EAC will be in place. Cambodia is ready. Cambodia is ready to be part of uh, EAC. Today, out of the four, 200 plus activities that ASEAN member state had to complete by December 2015, 80% plus of all ASEAN member states are complete that activities. So the, another remaining 20% will be done from now until 2015. Now, 2015 doesn't mean that the clock will stop. No, you continue to do more negotiation, implementation of the EAC. Now, for Cambodia, people say, oh, with the free movement of skilled labor, the people will come to Cambodia, take the job away from the Cambodian. I said, I'm not concerned. I don't expect a doctor in Singapore will migrate to be a doctor in Cambodia, earn $1,000 versus $10,000 or $20,000 in Singapore. I'm not afraid of that at all. What I'm concerned, I'm concerned is that I might have a brain drain of our engineer will go to work in Singapore, get more money. Our doctor, if they qualify, go and work in Thailand, for example. But in order to keep them in a the country, we must attract more FDI to create job for them, better paying job to keep them in a country. And that's why this part of trade mission that I come with US ambassador, 
called Reverse Trade Mission, where we bring the U.S. businessmen to the U.S. to do business matching with the businessmen in, 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 in the U.S. to attract more FDI to Cambodia, to create a better job, to keep them in the country. But it's going to be very good for ASEAN. ASEAN, in the process of negotiating ASEP, Regional Comprehensive Economic Partnership between 10 ASEAN countries, FTA, with Japan, Korea, China, India, New Zealand, Australia. Okay, that has 3.4 billion consumers, so represents 48% of the world population. Combined GDP of 21.2 trillion, trillion US dollars. Okay, so this is going to be a good time for Asia Pacific in the next century, if you will. But having said that, TPP also important. Trans Pacific, uh, uh, Trans -Pacific uh, Partnership of the U.S. So our ASEAN 10 country, 10 member state, four negotiate ASEP and also they negotiate with TPP. Singapore, Malaysia, the Philippines, Vietnam, they are members of negotiations for the TPP. Cambodia is not part or party to the TPP, but does not mean we do not want to be a part of a TPP. So we need to get ready. Sign the U.S. Uh, sign the uh, bilateral investment treaty with the U.S. That one condition that will lead us to the TPP. So we get ready just in the time that the TPP, but the TPP is not going to happen tomorrow. I guarantee you that. And if it happened, would Congress allow President Obama to go and sign? I don't know. So probably not two or three years. So three years from now, I think we'll be ready. We're ready to jump on that bandwagon if they allow us. I hope you answer the question. Yep, this thank you. Chan, yeah. can, I, can I ask you, uh, one of the things that uh, uh, you alluded to here is this, the technical, technically skilled labor. Yep. Uh, can, and one of the problems you hear from foreign investors mm -hmm. uh, is that they have trouble finding people at high skills. Could you tell us a little bit what you're doing, what Cambodia is doing to develop the engineers, the managers, et cetera, that Cambodia needs? Thanks. Good question. Today, we have a mismatch. What we produce from our university and what the investor want. We produce PhDs, an MBA, accountant, manager, but the investor give me technician. Give me a decision. We don't have. We don't have. Why? Because you have to understand the mentality of Asian family. I don't want my kid to go to technical vocational school. I want my kid to get a PhD, a bachelor, a master's degree. So that's the mindset. But when they graduate, there's no job. So now we shift. We shift to more and more vocational training school in order to provide the skilled labor to the investor. We also encourage the investor to set up the, the training facility. Many bear, Japanese company, that move, relocate from Thailand to Cambodia. They said, look, I need 5,000 workers, skilled labor. We couldn't give to them. So they set up their training center. And then they asked, they said, look, I'm going to train the people. But in return, Mr. Government of Cambodia, I want exclusivity for motor, that certain type of motor. I want five years exclusivity. Please do not allow any other investor to come in. They come in, and they take all the workers that I train. So we trade off. Okay, fine, you give them five years on a, on a few specific motors that many bear produce. So we do that to give the incentive to train more people. ANZ Bank came to Cambodia, recruit people, said, I don't want the people that work for the bank. I want a fresh anybody that don't understand anything about banking. Please come to work for us. They train them. So that's how, that how we work. But we shift more and more to vocational uh, training facility a program. Yeah. Yes, sir. Yeah, uh, I hear you. And... Uh, we uh, hear that uh, you have a lot of problems, but I want to add one more problem to you. Uh, <laughs> moving on roads. Uh, 
you know, we travel from Phnom Penh to Siem Reap, which is about uh, 200 miles. And uh, it takes about six hours. So my question is, uh, you have any plan to solve this kind of problem? Okay. Thank you. I'm, 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 Siem Reap, I'm trying to, uh, can you give me? give me the map? Oh, 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 yeah, yeah, I'm Sos Camp, some Sos Camp retiree from the State Department. Uh, let me address uh, him as uh, uncle. You know, so uncle's a uh, good question that you asked. Today, is that the travel time of Phnom Penh to Siem Reap, which is the, uh, the home of Uncle Wat, takes around six hours. We are expanding the road. We build a road from Phnom Penh on the way to Siem Reap, around 80 kilometers, expand to four lanes. And from there to Siem Reap, we enlarge to 12 meters. And asphalt concrete, they're going to be probably the best road from Phnom Penh to Siem Reap that will cut down your travel time from six probably to three and a half hours. Okay, but we'll take probably two, two more years to complete that road. So today, a lot of construction. So very slow to go to, to Siem Reap. Now, I'm, I'm trying to get the map so I can uh, show people the, what uh, our uncles uh, asked on, on that. Not, not this one, the, the road map. Yeah, with all the... Yeah. But anyways, we, we, we build a lot of uh, road. Road numbers... Uh, uh, Okay, here it is. Okay, so that's uh, the road. This uh, road uh, number six, okay, the Phnom Penh. So from Phnom Penh up to here, to Skun, that could be four lanes. And then we enlarge to 12 meters, okay, uh, asphalt concrete. Here, from here, route number five, 30 kilometers also, we build the four, four lanes. Uh, then from here to there, Japanese uh, JICA also help us enlarge the four lane. And later on, that's not going to be four lanes. It's going to be four lane. We, in the process of uh, reviewing the application on a BOT, build operate transfer of a company to invest in expressway, four lane from Phnom Penh to our deep sea port. Now we have another company also looking to do the BOT, Phnom Penh to Ho Chi Minh City, uh, four lane also. We are building the Mekong Bridge here. Today, you have to wait for the ferry, 2015. The Mekong Bridge will be ready. You can go from Cambodia in the morning. You have breakfast. Uh, no, you have breakfast here in Phnom Penh. Then you drive to Vietnam. You have lunch in Vietnam. Then you come back. You have dinner in Cambodia. Take you four and a half hours from Phnom Penh to Ho Chi Minh City. So a lot of road being built. A lot, a lot of road being built in Cambodia. And uh, I'm, I'm also right now uh, try to build a road connecting Kampong Chanang to Kampong Thom right here, cut across right here and also from Battambong to Siem Reap. So from this tourism uh, a pole to another tourism pole here in Battambong, there's going to be a road crisscross right here. That's on our master plan. Because I have the opportunity to serve as a minister of public work and transport. Uh, so we set up a lot of master plan uh, to build a road. So uncle, please come back. If you want to go now, take you six years, or six, six uh, hours to go to Siem Reap. But you go back in two years, take you three and a half hours to go to Siem Reap. Very fast, beautiful road. Yeah. Any last questions? Yes. Uh, thank you, Minister uh, Dental. I, I just, uh, since you already mentioned. Can you introduce uh, yourself, please? So Pat Sang uh, from VOA My Service. Um, since you mentioned uh, serious economic reforms, um, I, I wanted to want to ask you. Um, uh, what is sort of the assurance? Uh, I mean, the Cambodian government has mentioned economic reforms before. Um, you, as the new uh, Minister of Commerce, what, what are the assurances this time that these, the government is taking these reforms very seriously? Well, the assurance uh, uh, to reassure the investor, this means you have to reassure yourself. The question, do you want to win the election 2018? If they said yes, we want to win the election. If you want to win the election 2018 to be relevant, you stick to your reform agenda and do it quick, do it fast. If not, 
you will not be there. So that's why we understand that. We know that we must reform. Without reform, we're going to have a problem in 2018. We cannot track FDI if we don't reform. Then people don't have a job. Without job, create social unrest. So the government un can move understand that. That's why we move you know, to, to reform, meaningful reform, like what we did, uh, you know, we're doing at the Ministry of Commerce, at education, at custom, taxation, all that, at finding ministry. In general, there's major reform, judiciary reform. If the court system in Cambodia is not independent, who's going to invest money in Cambodia? If the local partner or Cambodian always win the case through bribery, no one will go there. So that's why we have a major law just passed to ensure the independence of our court system so that the investor will have a confidence in our court system and they invest in the country. Without that, no one will invest. Thank you. Any other question? Well, thank you very much. I hope uh, I answer your question. And please, please come to visit us. We are committed, Cambodian government committed, determined, determined to reform. We cannot build Cambodia alone. But with our determination, with our commitment, with the participation of the private sector, together we can build a better future for Cambodia. Thank you. Thank you very much, Minister Chantal, for that very engaging, enlightening uh, presentation and discussion. You brought a lot of energy. You're very enthusiastic. That's great. <laughs>